Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Fellowship in Essential Oils. Liz, how are you this week? <laughs> so I am both nervous and feeling mischievous today about this one. I woke up several times in the night going, do you know your science? Do you know your science? Oh, I don't know still. But anyway, we'll see how we go. I'm sure you're going to impress us. Today we're going to be looking at oregano, which is a very interesting essential oil um, for sure. You know, it sometimes people might just go, oh, it's just another one of the herbs along with basil or marjoram or thyme or something like that. But I think oregano has got a certain type of potency about it that should always be respected. Yeah, it's fierce, very fierce. And actually, so we'll, we'll do that bit first, that maximum dilution, according to Tisserand and Young, is 1.1%. I think even that's too high. I would say 1%. It's a really hot oil. And uh, interesting if you pay real close attention to, to cool pepper and actually read it rather than dipping into it. He does occasionally talk about essential oils right back into what was well, he 16th century. Isn't it? And uh, he specifically talks about the danger of using certain essential oils internally. And, and oregano is one of them that he says it's too hot, shouldn't do it, must dilute it. Um, and yet yeah, it is fierce. And what's interesting is it often gets confused with another extremely good product on the market called oregano oil. So not oregano essential oil, oregano oil, which is a different thing and that can be taken internally. So let's kind of address that first so we're clear on what it is we're talking about. Oregano oil is like um, the fresh herb that's been macerated or made into a tincture. So that's designed, so you like take a, it usually comes with a pipette, you scoop it up, put it into your uh, water and then drink like 200 ml of it a day. It, fantastic as like a, like a prophylactic preventative medicine against all sorts of bugs and germs. That is designed to be weak for you to be able to use that. And I'm going to use the air, air things because it isn't weak. It's just safe. You know, yeah. uh, whereas the oregano essential, if you drank that, if well, if you put that into water, first of all, oil mm. and water don't mix, um, so it'll float. So there's no dilution at all. So you're not just using like one percent dilution, as as we said earlier. You're using a hundred percent dilution, and it, and it it will really be quite horrible to do. Um, I mean, we don't say that we can't take it internally because that would be daft because we eat oregano all the time in our house guy what, what do you want what do you want for tea spaghetti bolognese i don't know why i bother asking every time so you know so you you we, you imbibe lots of it but it, it's so concentrated in that in that form it's not a good plan you should always um dilute it and, and use it topically definitely i must say you know oregano when it comes to dilution you know whenever we're putting any oils on our skin should always be diluted anyway. Let's be honest, we can sneak a little bit of neat lavender or frankincense on once in a while on tea tree and it's not going to do any harm. Oregano is just one where under no circumstances should you be putting on undiluted. It's going to it's going to irritate the skin in some degree, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is very irritant, yeah. Yeah. And it's yeah. irritant to the to like the skin, but also so like it's a dermal irritant, but also it's irritant to the mucous membranes. Very so much. again, if you were thinking, Oh, I've got a really stuffy nose, and you wouldn't want to like put it up your nose. Fool, fool for doing that. That's really gonna hurt you and probably make your nose bleed because it thins the blood as well. Yeah. So oregano, I think it's you know you would you and I use our oils in different ways. I, I love to use oils every, like from the moment I get up in the morning a diffuser goes on to when I get into bed at night, oils go on my feet. I'm not doing that for any health issue in particular. I'm using it for proactively in mm -hmm. that kind of way. Yeah. Whereas, you know, you, you work a lot with clients when they've got a health issue and, you know, that type of thing as well. For me, though, oregano has a special place and it's definitely not an oil that, you know, I would be using every single day. I at my rule is normally five days on five days off, but I use it not proactively. I use it when I start to see things going wrong with my immune system and I'm starting to get sick. I call oregano the Terminator. You know, yeah. he's known for being antiviral, antibacterial, antimicrobial, anti bloom and everything. So he's the one to come out when you start to get that, oh, my throat's feeling not quite right, or oh, the muscles start making you like, okay, let's bring out the Terminator. And that's what that's where I use oregano. 
Yeah, and I think that that like archetype that you chose was was spot on. If I was to to pick an ar- archetype, uh, I don't know if it will translate in other countries, but I would say the SAS. So not just the army, but the special armed forces. Mm. These are the ones you send in where when you know we can't get rid of a big leader or whatever, and you know we're going to hunt it, da- hunt him down, and ex- completely wipe him out. So absolutely, exactly the same uh, archetype. Yeah. Yeah. When are you normally finding that you are reaching for oregano in particular? Um, so I use it for digestive issues. I think it's really good for digestive. Um, I use it for, um, I, I say coughs and colds. If it's like a sniffle, nah, I'm not going for that. But if I've got like a chest infection starting or something like that, and like respiratory as in like, Maybe lower respiratory more than upper respiratory, really, where you've got that um, sense of congestion and it, it is expectorant, but there are other oils that are better expectorants, like like hyssop, for example. People go, oh, no, you don't use hyssop. I blooming love hyssop, I do, mm. for my bad lungs. Um, but I would always underpin with oregano. So I'm going to make a blend and I'm going to put them behind it. You know, these are the people with the great big spears, you know, <laughs> yes. with, the, with the bayonets and stuff. Right. So let them do the skillful stuff. Aragano is going to come in and go, I'm going to get you. Yeah. So anything like that. Also like fungal infections, particularly like um, things like candida. Although I have to say that's a really good way to use oregano oil as opposed to oregano essential oil um those kind of those kind of infections and like chronic conditions that don't go away um so like Mm. candida where it's just like there's no getting on top of it lyme's disease things like that that are are underlying and you're like what on earth am i going to do with that i would use oregano oil and oregano essential oil together in different ways um so yeah fun- fungal infections definitely um as i say things like bronchitis um also if somebody has lost their appetite so um we might say um somebody who has anorexia although i'll be more i'd lean more into tarragon to be honest on that side and i can't really ex- explain why i don't think but like if you've got somebody who has been ill for a long time and you know oh, i just don't want to eat anything and of course then that's a really dangerous moment in that that things are going to go downhill from there um oregano is a good one so of course you've got you you're using it in cooking but you can use it in your your blends as well yeah and not only has it been used effectively with humans but also i know that in places such as usa um, they're actually putting oregano essential oil in chicken food um, because it's more powerful than antibiotics in killing superbugs and so on. Yeah, and actually that's a, that's an area I should have said as well, parasitic, um, so uh, worms and things like that. Um, I think Culpepper and Gerard both suggested for scorpion bites. Now in Ludlow, I would never have a need to use that, but that shows how strong an anti-venom it is that it could tackle something as strong as that. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, we've been talking about it over the last few minutes about how powerful it is and all these kind of archetypes and that type of thing. One thing that kind of doesn't quite sit right with me is it's often referred to as joy of the mountain. And it did doesn't it, quite did, have is a that joy true? Is that true? Does that not sit right with you? Because I really feel very strongly that that's no way that that's joy of the mountain. You're quite right. Yeah. Yeah. Any any idea what the origin of that is? Or? Oh well, I think that I think that it, it's the translation is correct. Uh, so I've looked. So let let me give a bit of background. In uh, right at the beginning of the Melissa work, and I had no idea who these women were and what they were doing. One thing that occurred to me was this herb, which is you quite rightly say is called Joy of the Mountains, is was on the hillside and bees would have been flocking around it but also probably were the herbal healers and so I could see how that imagery might come that oh they're always around the herbs like the bees are you know Mm. um but there is like so 
the translation is correct um, that it is a joy of the mountains, but this idea that it was um, a, um, a favourite of Aphrodite's. Why? Why would it be a favourite of Aphrodite's? That makes no sense to me. But when you look at um, the medicine of marjoram and how marjoram makes you feel, I think yeah. that, that fits. And that, that is Ar- Oregano Majora, Majora, isn't it? It's So it's still Oregano. I think it's not the same. I think same that... One. And I think now that, like, somebody's written it down and everyone's gone, oh, that's it, and it's been regurgitated over and over again. But I, I can't see how that is correct, so that that's um, a favourite of Aphrodite. But uh, but marjoram would make sense to me that it would be. Yeah, very much indeed. And when we kind of talk about how we'd use it on an emotional level, you know, I've talked often about what an oil will do physically, it does emotionally and holistically as well. So we we've kind of explain that oregano works very well as that kind of terminator sas kind of archetype in that type of way it's also obviously the oil is gifted from the leaves so any oil that comes from leaves is associated with the element of air um and so to do with the mind so what i find oregano really really great for is shaking up thought patterns that no longer serve us just as oregano goes through the body and gets rid of any bacteria any fungi any virus anything that's not serving us in that way It can also be used with the mind for breaking apart old habits. You know, so if we look at kind of, you know, we can get stereotypical and typical Taurians that tend to be a bit stubborn or anyone who's kind of like, it's it's always been this way and I'm going to keep it this way, but that's no longer serving you. I'd really reach in for oregano for that way. Um, Tarot-wise, I correspond to oregano with the tower card. Now, if you're not familiar with the tarot, if you Google an image of it, you'll see a big tower has been struck by lightning and the two people falling out of the tower. Now, if you look at their faces, one is screaming, but the other one is actually smiling. And so oregano almost is about there's got, there's a need for a shake-up in life. And it, it, I, I reach for it on a holistic or an emotional level um, when someone is feeling stuck, when they're being rigid, and they need a bit of a shake-up. And in fact, magically, it's been used in past centuries for breaking apart regimes. So really interesting that... I love oregano for that. Let's deconstruct in order to regrow and flourish like the tarot uh, card of the tower often represents. Interesting that you said regimes. That's exactly the kind of imagery I said about sending in the SAS, isn't it? Wipe out out the leader. Um, I like that very much. And I have to say, I, I was kind of, I knew obviously you were going to ask the question about the spiritual aspect of oregano, and I was like, does it have one? So I contemplated all yesterday, and I did come up with one, and then when I, I thought, I'll hit the books and see what other people have said, and, and Valerie and Woolwood had said exactly the same thing as I had come up with, in that I think it's very good for people who are hypochondriacs. Um, so those and and actually, I think maybe there's a different kind of hypochondriac exists now to when she would have written that it was in the fragrant mind, maybe or maybe fragrant heavens, can't remember which one. But obviously, time has passed on, and I think we have a new generation of hypochondriacs who are very nervous because they were traumatized by COVID. Um, and uh, and so, I mean, it's not. It's unfair to say that it's an irrational thing to be a hypochondriac because, let's be honest, we're surrounded by bugs all the time. But I think it's, it makes more sense now after we really were, you know, at, at war really with this um, bug before. And there are a lot of people who were frightened to go out and, you know, still wearing masks and stuff and and for whatever reason. And their their reality now must be very different to the rest of us who have kind of just gone, oh, I'm getting on with it. So mm. I think oregano would be really helpful for those because you've got that that sort of preventative medicine aspect of it, but also because it is a warrior as well. You know, it carries yeah. that, with that that warrior defense with it. Um, but also there was um, another thing that I read. No, no, I can't remember the lady's name. I think her name is Heba El Hakib. And she wrote about how it's very good for breaking down rigid structures in people's personalities, but particularly the need to be right. 
And I mm. thought, that's absolutely correct. I can feel that absolutely um, right. So she was saying, like, there's lots of people who um, just don't know how to step away from a principle, you know, just and yep. they've always got to create an argument or and they create problems right through everybody. And I can see th that's clever what she said. I think that's absolutely true about what Oregano would do, be able to say, no, you can, it's all right. You can just step back from that. You don't need to keep making your point. Yeah. Yeah. Now, obviously, when we're using it on in these different levels, I, I don't know. It depends where people are in the world. And I find maybe people with like an Italian background quite like the aroma. I'm not a fan of the aroma of oregano as well. How would you possibly propose using it in these emotional things? Like if, if someone was to say, oh, let's pop it in a diffuser and that will help to break down rigid structures in the mind, I'd be like, mm, no. Any suggestions on what you would do? Well, bear in mind that the maximum dilution is really, really low. Um, yeah. Remind me to come back to diffusers in a minute because um, yeah. I'll forget otherwise and I'll do uh, something I want to say about that. Um, so I, I would use topically, as you know, I'm not a diffuser person. I'll use an evaporator sometimes, but for the most, um, it, it's... Um, so you could put the smallest amount into a blend of something else. You're exactly. still going to get that um, medicine coming through. And in those kinds of situations, if, you, if you're looking to get like um, an emotional version of the medicine as opposed to a physical version of the medicine, you can go really, really wee, really tiny. So you could go like a, a homeopathic dose. We've spoken about that before, making the one fifteenth of a drop. So you could say, right, okay, I've got... Um, 14 drops of carrier oil, then one drop of oregano. I'm going to put that in and then I'm going to put one drop of that blend into my other blend. Um, so, and you know, if we look at work like um, Dr. Bruce Bukowski and he does spiritual phytoessencing, his amounts of oil are much, much smaller than even that. You know, he goes really minute amounts. Um, so that's what I would do. I would go tiny, tiny, and then mix it with something much nicer um, to do. Yeah. 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 No, I've always found as long as you've got at least a, a touch of each oil in there, it brings its energy in. And it's not so much about the quantity. It's about that vibrational frequency. And I guess, you know, if we kind of think of, I'm, I'm thinking of all those kind of, you know, medieval movies that we watch, and there's always one great warrior in the battle, but... He's not alone. There's a whole army. So you bring in your other oils that might help in whatever you're working with. But just that one drop of oregano, or that small portion of oregano, is that one warrior that will come in and save the day. So I went out yesterday with my mum and I went to this really old tea shop. And it was like all set out like 1940s. And they got tea cozies on all the teapots, which were very cute. And I said to mum, there's this meme going around uh, Facebook at the moment that um, is something that Billy Connolly said. Do you know who Billy Connolly is? I do, yes. Okay, he's he's so stretched it, beyond uh, yeah, the UK. <laughs> okay, right, okay. So he said, uh, as a rule of thumb, surround yourself with people who, if they're left in a room on their own with a tea cosy, will always try it on. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like yes, yes. And, and that's kind of a bit like the imagery of the oregano, that you only need the tea cosy in the room, the, that one little drop. But you know that that's going to spread right through. Mm. It. I mean, it's such a strong oil that that defensive, uh, that sort of defense nature of it, and that kind of let's. It, it's like the general. It says the right thing to the rest of the army. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Now I had to remind you, diffusers. Diffusers. Thank you. Yes. So, the key component in uh, oregano essential oil and probably oregano oil i guess i don't know um is carbacrol um that's so in depending on what uh which version of it is and by that i mean it does it come from this company or that company or that country or whatever all extractions are going to be slightly different you're looking at around about 60 to around about 80 percent carbacrol so that's a lot um so carvacrol belongs to a chemical group called phenols and the phenols are the really powerful. They're the warriors and they're the heat in the oil. Well, um, I don't know if you know that cats do not have uh, 
the, um, a particular enzyme in the liver to be able to break down phenols. Mm. So we have to be really careful with oils that are highly phenolic uh, around cats if they're in a diffuser. So if you imagine that like a diffuser uses a small amount of water usually to kind of send out molecules into the air, those airborne oracles, molecules can land anywhere. Particularly, they could land on a, um, a cat's fur. If the cat licks it, then it's 100% uh, oregano. So we don't want to do that. And then what happens, of course, is when it goes into our liver, we break it out or down into lots of metabolites. And so we can manage it. But a cat can't do that. Mm -hmm. So and there's lots of oils like that. I should have said that really about clove and about cinnamon, but particularly with the, uh, with um, oregano because it's really high in such a strong uh, phenol. Yes, you can use it in your diffuser, but I would say if you've got a cat, I really wouldn't. It's you know you you, you can follow the the tricks of leaving the door open so they can get out and stuff. But those airborne molecules. It's a hypothetical risk, but it is a high hypothetical risk. I must admit, anyone who's going to put oregano in a diffuser, it's not going to smell good anyway, so I'm not no. sure why they're doing it. But, you know, no, if, you if, can't, the, but if like, the Italians if you want got, to. I don't think you'd put it in a diffuser ever for the point of view of just like, am I having a party or I want it to feel nice or whatever yeah. like that. But you might if you've got like measles or, or mm, COVID mm. or whatever in the house, that's a sensible thing to do to, to like – aerate the thing but just be really careful around the cat yeah definitely for sure you talked about carver carver crow coal carver crow 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 yes like, yeah, carver like crow. <laughs> crow, yep um being sorry did you say 60 to 80 percent in oregano yeah usually around about that yeah yeah now i believe thyme and some of savory are other oils that also have carver crow in them they're at a lower level is that right yeah, certainly in tea, uh, time, I, I wouldn't even be able to tell you without, I mean, I could look on uh, now as we talk, if you want, for some savoury, but it's not an oil I've ever used. It's always been classed as a hazardous oil since I trained, so I don't know. Got you. Yeah. So I, I do believe they are, and I often talk about them being the, the safer siblings or the more gentle siblings. Um, You know, time especially is like, oregano is that big gun when you need it. Time is a bit more like, okay, maybe we can bring out time before we actually have to go for the oregano in that way. Yeah. I, and I, I mean, I think thyme is a lovely, beneficent oil. Oregano's not. Yeah. The, the amount of people I've heard that have had positive experiences with, um, you know, really challenging health concerns um, that have, like, I swear by thyme. I have people that will come I, and I, like, I don't, don't care about yeah. any other oils, but give me, I, I need some thyme because, you know, that they find it's, a, that, that they believe it's a cure all kind of thing. Yeah, and I, and it's like, I mean, we talk about the differences between different aromatherapies, between different, like, countries. We also, we always talk about, like, um, French aromatherapy and how that they take it internally. French aromatherapy kind of pretty much evolves completely around thyme oil. Hmm, interesting. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, that... it's one of their most important oils. Yeah, okay. Um, chakras. What would what chakras would you associate oregano with? I've got a bit of an unusual layout for this one. Um, you know, I haven't even really thought about it. Um, I guess. Well, you could say root. I wouldn't really say it was sacral. Yes, yes, solar plexus because, uh, like identity issues and digestive issues wouldn't say heart absolutely don't agree with joy of the mountain so not heart um or do agree with the name but not the aphrodite association throat yeah i can see throat maybe because it's definitely good for like gargles for sore throats and stuff like that not third eye not crown well i'm not really coming up with a great one you're obviously going to come up yeah. with a different one Oh, no, it's interesting listening to your process then. I, I choose two different chakras to it. The main one probably is the base chakra. I think it's really interesting working with the base chakra, not so much when we want grounding and safety, because we've talked about today about it actually shaking that up. But sometimes when we have an underactive base chakra or we're locked into how something should be, but that's not serving us anymore, we need to kind of renovate 
our way of being to re- regain a sense of safety. And I think Oregano can be really good for kind of if a base shark was sitting in a wrong spot of like, this is not where you're going to find safety. Like clinging on to the past when when the base chakra, especially in his modern times, if you're not willing to evolve and adapt and change, you're going to get left behind and you're going to struggle. And that's why I often find people, especially the elderly, struggle with their base chakra because they're still trying to do things the way they used to do them and it's just not working. So oregano can actually help with allowing us to progress and keep evolving um, in in this modern world. And if you know, I always like to go back to nature. And if you look in nature, nothing stands still. Everything is either growing or if it's not growing, it's decaying. Even rocks are either growing in some way or they're starting to get weathered in that way. So oregano kind of keeps us moving in that right way. So Bay Shark are the primary one, but I kept finding different authors and teachers and so on talking about it being a throat chakra one. I was like, oh, I'm not totally feeling that, but I kind of sat with it. I've kind of come to peace with the idea of, well, how do we bring about change? If we look at which energy center would be that, it's our words. Sometimes the throat chakra is referred to as being the bridge of peace. Through our words, we can actually create harmonious relationships and create peace. But at the same time, we can also disrupt peace and shake things up. And the first way to do that is through our self-expression and what we actually say. So although we may be feeling different things within us, the throat chakra is a bit of a channel that goes, hey, I'm going to shake things up and oregano would support that. I'd, again, I'd normally in my um, throat chakra work, I'd work with the eucalyptuses, I'd work with the cypresses, um, I'd work with the chamomiles. They tend to be my favourite ones for the throat chakra for more that free, flowing, healthy communication. But again, oregano is a special occasion type of essential oil. And when you need to, speak up. Maybe you've been in a situation where um, you've been putting up with something for too long. It's time to kind of be empowered and say something then a dab of oregano in one of those throat chakra blends could be really beneficial. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, you came to the same conclusions as me. It was interesting to say, isn't it? What I would say mm. is if you're working on your throat chakra with oregano, you know that your words probably are not going to come out kind. They're not going to be subtle. No. They're not going to be tactful. Um, so, so there's a thing about that, it, very similar to sweet basil she don't care what she's got to say she's just gonna say it and go better move out the way right now and it's a bit like that whereas i think that she's like a bit like that whereas i think that that you kind of it would be will be cutting the way that you say it if you say it with yeah with with oregano and there's definitely gonna be heat in it um and i suppose i mean i know it's like an unusual thing but I'll, I'll skip forward because whether you'll ask about planetary rulership, I think when I've looked it up, loads of people have said to Jupiter, I'm like, I don't, don't go with that. But but it seems like a Mars thing to me, like the the like the drive and the passion and the um the way that it acts on the blood, it thins on the blood. That's a Mars thing, and so you could kind of use it like well, instead of word instead of using the word passion, I'm going to say tempest. You know, like a real t- mm. tempestuous fire relationships. The Italian, you know, got a kind of archetype. You you can see how it's that. So you could use it, I guess, as some kind of aphrodisiac. But you'd have to be very clever with your blending. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You know, if I had to pick a major planet, Mars, I I would also agree with Oregano. But I often um associate with Eris, who is a dwarf Rice. planet, who is the sister of Mars and the goddess of discord and strife. Again. As she transits around, when she's in retrograde, where she is in your birth chart, is normally where you like to shake things up, where you like to cause a bit of revolution or discord and that type of thing. So when it comes to Eris, my primary oil that I often go for is actually oregano and mix it in with things like with a cardamom or something like that as well to really, yeah, shake it up for sure. I mean, somehow, quite often when I'm doing this kind of work, there's another narrative in the background that's going on. And it makes no sense to articulate it because it's not related, but it is related. And it really feels, when I'm talking about this oregano, that there's a parallel to what's going on in Gaza. Um, the, mm. the, 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 the revolution, the, the fighting, the uh, things coming to the surface... It's kind of like a, a, and like you say about Eris and Mars, there feels like a parallel going on there. 
Very much so, yeah. And when we think about the, the tower card, it is there must be destruction in order th- there to be new growth in that Breaking type of way. So sometimes, yeah. you know, probably if we if we take it to something a bit more personal or on an interpersonal level, when a ma- sometimes a marriage that hasn't been serving the two individuals for a long time, eventually it comes to a head and Oregano will bring it to a head because both people really deserve to be with someone who loves them and they love. And so that relationship falls apart. It's messy. It's just, you know, all that type of thing. But hopefully they all, they both go off and they find two people where they can actually have true loving relationships. And Oregano, again, is that one that you, it almost throws a cat amongst the pigeons to bring it up. So there is, really I mean, way. there's a sense as well, like when you bring those two together, of the feeling of be careful what you're told. Don't mm. listen to everything that you're told. Um, how how do you feel next to it? So it's funny that both of us said the same thing about Joy of the Mountains. That doesn't seem right to me. Um, and then we've got this, like, um, Palestine narrative going on. The British government are, pa- are taking a very strong stance against people who are uh, protesting and they're calling these pr- protests hate crimes and then suddenly that's the that's the word we're living by and like I think most people are like no actually we see both sides of this and mm. this, this is a humanitarian a crisis and I'm on the side of humanity here but the papers don't say that and the uh, and the politicians don't try to say that and it kind of does feel like oregano medicine like getting ready to go no we power to the people in a way you know very true. And when we think about, you know, I talked about leaf oils before being very much to do with the mind, and I like to kind of put them in subcategories, where you've got your big t- tree leaf oils, so that's our firs and our spruces, our eucalyptuses, and they tend to be very expansive and open the mind, whereas all your small uh, s- small plant leaf oils, so oregano, basil, peppermint, lemongrass, things like that, they focus the mind. And, w- you know, we talk about regimes and we probably think about political regimes, but there is a bit of a... Um, you know, people have an adversity to, you know, big corporations, big government, big, you know, the big um, controlling bodies of this world. And I I feel Oregano kind of encourages us to, let's just have a look at the truth. You know, I've I've been talking to friends about the situation in Gaza at the moment and and the protests that are happening in different parts of the world and and London comes up because you see on social media, um, you know, the footage of these violent clashes and all these different types of things. And I'm encouraging, um, you know, some people to kind of go, well, look, remember that hype sells news. So I'm not saying that, you know, so, and and they're sending me footage, but when I'm actually watching the violent clashes, yeah. it's normally zoomed right in yeah. to a couple of police with a couple of people having a scuffle, although there's a large amount of people around. Most of them are holding their phones to filming it. And you go, oh, my God, it, it, look, it looks really bad because, you know, not that I did too much media studies at school, but when you zoom into something, it, that's where, where it gets scary when you, you zoom into a scary moment. But if you look at the grand scale, you're like, okay, well, 50,000 people protested peacefully. A couple had a there's few no, too many drinks. There's no doubt that the, the, the media is being provocative. Um, yeah. there's, no, there's none. And I, I saw a wonderful reel this morning saying, you know, what we, we don't need provocation right now. We need calming. That's what yeah. we need. The whole thing need, needs to calm down and we need to be the light that calms everybody down. And I think we kind of have come full circle to what we said right at the beginning, that we don't, not provocation isn't always the right thing. You know, this spikes in aggression isn't always the right thing. So we don't use oils like uh, like uh, oregano. Oregano spike all yep. of the time. We, you know, we use we use calm as much as we can. We we allow our body to keep coming back into homeostasis. But as you quite rightly say, and actually, maybe we it, uh, this is like more of a I'll, I'll be, behave myself today and say an Uranus uh, kind of thing that it's like the the individual and the collective, but the the necessary break of regimes. That's kind of what we've been talking about with this oil. Very much so. And it could be one, you know, even looping back around to the throat chakra and what we're doing on an individual level, I would probably mix it in throat chakra things with something like Roman chamomile for the throat chakra, which my my kind of mantra for Roman chamomile is a gentle nudge is more powerful than a shove. And hinoki, which is very much about being calm and wise and selective 
with your words. And so let's say that you've been putting up with a situation in your life that's not good enough. Oregano might give you the strength to say something, but if you just go oregano like we talked about, you're going to burn your bridges. How can you use oregano to give you the confidence to speak up, but the Roman Camel and the Hinoki maybe to articulate that in the most pow- potent, powerful way that will get the effect you want rather than just you blurting out your fury? Yeah, or or something like, I mean, the difficulty is what you're, what you, the oils that probably are most helpful to it probably smell disgusting next to it, to be honest. Mm. So, like, for example, Mandarin, very convivial, very chatty, really knows about communication, but would smell horrible. So you'd have to think really carefully about how you blended that with, but actually Roman chamomile might be a, a third wheel that would make it right. Rose, you know, that beautiful beneficence, that gentleness, fantastic. Melissa, you know, the bees are supposed to be the the um the voices of the muses. So, you know, that 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 wisdom and those um the um honeyed uh tongue, all of those things, those kind of thoughts back to the ancient ways of of putting things together it, it can be quite helpful for doing those kind of emotional blends, spiritual blends. Very much so. Now, our masterclass that we're going to be doing in December, we're going to be focusing on immunity, and that's why we wanted, you know, Oregano kind of snuck in there. We're going to focus on the solstices as well um, and kind of the holiday season. But I think I might, I'm just kind of inspired after our conversation today. If people are interested, I'd love to do a little bit of throat chakra work on how to make your own personal throat chakra blend. And I've got a little bit of a quiz that we can run um, during the masterclass. So anyone who um, registers for that, can do the quiz and even if you get the replay and you can't be there live then oregano definitely is one of the oils in there but it might give you some suggestions on other ones to slot in there as well so that's coming up in just a few weeks time uh at the end of this month yeah Ron, we, we we're ahead of our game for a change we know what oils we're going to do don't we so next week we'll do uh, cardamom and then the following week we will do um myrrh which will sneak in which obviously the book that i'm writing at the moment so be interesting for everybody to come along and hear some of the stuff about Merck. So remember, whether you're watching us now on YouTube or you're listening to us on one of the podcasting platforms, there's always a description below. We always have the link there and we've got the discount code. So bloom and use it so you can <laughs> save the 20% off as well. It's fellowship in all capital letters as well. Anything else that we need to shamelessly plug before we let everyone go and play with their oregano? The only, thing, the only again? thing I'm going to remind people is if you're worried about things like maximum dilutions and stuff, you can get this free on Amazon, don't forget, or obviously buy, send me some money by buying buying the paperback again on uh, Amazon. But all of those like maximum dilutions and contraindications are all in there. I'm going to throw in just a little point that people don't always realise as well. When people are authors, we have various ways of distributing our book. But as often as you can, if you can go back to the author's website or purchase from them, um, they're getting remunerated more fully for their work. If you're buying it on things, you know, different third parties or through distributors or even shops, obviously those profits have to be shared between the people that got those products out. So if you're a big fan of an author, whether it be Liz, myself, or anyone else as well, what I always do when I hear about a book is I go to their website. I look at where I if, where I can buy it off them, and if not, I go where they refer me as well. So some people just don't realise that, and they're like, oh, I just bought your book kind of thing. But that's, absolutely, there's a difference in... that's absolutely right, and I do always write a note in the ones I send out. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> yeah, there's a difference. I know in some of my books, some of them I'll, you know, I'll make $30 profit, and others I get paid ooh, about $0.30 cents profit off them. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that makes a difference. But we thank you for purchasing our books wherever you purchase them anyway and spreading the word. We'll be back next week when we're going to dive into another passionate oil of cardamom. I've got lots to say about that, so I'm really excited about cardamom. Um, Until then, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and take care of Mother Earth because she's giving us all these Mountain Joy oils like oregano. (laughs) Love it. Bye-bye.